Good morning, guys. Okay, I got full fam in here. So if it's loud out there and you can hear, I'm so sorry. Anywho, good morning. As you guys can see, your girl's still in her robe ski. And I just finished washing my face and brushing my teeth and all that good stuff. Um, still a little ashy. I'm gonna handle that after this video. Um, had a little too much fun at Christmas last night. <laughs> Anywho, um, I got woken up three times last night. And after being woken up three times, oh, I am so sorry. This is your girl Mellow here. Can you tell today is a different day? This is your girl Mellow. And this is Raw Talk with Mellow's Couch Confessions, which is what I'm going to be explaining in a second. So, I got woken up three times last night. And I know what I have to do. See, if I ignore it, it just bugs me. Like, they bug me until I, like, just do it, right? Just don't fight being obedient, okay? So, anyway. Today, we're going to do a couch confession. And the couch confession is going to be one that I had mentioned before. And that is going to be my business partner from hell. Okay. Um, as usual, you guys know I never name names because people have the right to their own privacy and they have the right to address things that they want. My job is not to create drama. My job is to tell my stories and give the lessons that come behind it as I'm told to and make sure I still respect people's privacy and that is never going to change. I don't care. So let's get into it shall we so raw talk with mellow what not a lot of people know started off as just a regular little radio segment on a radio station i was asked to do it and i was very reluctant at first because i was in a stage of life where my confidence was low i had just gotten out of some crap i just wasn't quite feeling like myself i wasn't feeling like confident huh, mel i was feeling very timid i was feeling very boxed in and i was feeling very like just not confident at all i didn't even like me or my body or anything at that time i didn't like who i was mental nothing no aspect of myself this was work yeah okay so uh sinus is this first thing in the morning so um yeah that's how it started anyways i which is why i always tell you guys fear is in the mind and don't let it stop you because i literally forced myself to just do it and things kept going from there um, eventually, which I had mentioned before, I wanted to go uh, visual and they didn't want to take that step with me. So I was forced to go by myself. Okay. Among other things, but I like to keep away from drama. So that is all that I'm going to say. Okay. Um, so from there now, your girl is solo dolo. I'm on my own. And when I had been on the radio segment still, I had had a guest. Like, I had somebody that I had invited on as a raw. And it was an old face, an old friend. So I was comfortable. I was like, yo, like, I, I remember you. Like, I remember certain things. Like, the combo was still good and light. And it was almost nostalgic for me. It was refreshing. So I didn't mind. You know, the friendship was nice. Um... After doing the show and having the individual on my show, they, okay, so this person then let me know, right, that, yo, I would like to join this. Key, I want you guys to remind, like, remember this when I go through this whole couch confession. Key, although I was grateful, I did not ask you to join. You asked me if you could join after being on the show already. So... I thought about it in like two seconds because you know vibes was good and stuff which be careful with that people have a good way of making themselves seem like and then you get wrapped in right so i was like okay cool like i don't mind that at all like i could use the help i'm on my own i don't even know how to do this like i'm figuring things out like it would be great to have help and a help from a friend that i felt like i could trust 
So another reason why, thanks for the reminder, didn't need it. Another reason why, which I'm going to mention that I was more so happy to have this friend say, hey, can I help you? Can I be on board? Is because I had asked three different cousins, two male and one female to help me with my show when it just started. The first one told me to get my followers up. That sucked. <laughs> and then he would help. I don't think I'd say anything about that. You can just think how that make anybody feel, right? All right, cool. Then the second person that I had asked started to help. Like, did actually start to help at the beginning. But then when it came time to do the first show, didn't show up. And when it came time to do the second show, didn't show up. And then the third family member that I had, because I, I always thought that like family members is better, right? So, um, yeah, the third one came now and she was great. She was very like supportive with it and everything. But I started to realize little things like she constantly wanted to be on the show and slowly started like asking me like how I do things. You get my drift, y'all? So you can see where I'm going with that. That's how that went, okay? Um, so again, these are a few reasons why I was so discouraged at the at first and I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, I'm just going to focus on this friend that seems to actually be supportive and looks like they might want to follow through because they've been on it before so they understand. Cool. Moving forward, we are now working together. Now, oh, I forgot something, something very important. When this individual had asked me to join, I made it very clear. You are not getting paid for this. I don't even get paid for this. This is just a baby that's starting up. Like this is, I like a regular person. I hustle and work a job like everybody else. And when I wasn't working, I found ways like everybody else, but this is like a baby. I don't look at this to guzzle money from people. I look at this to spread love and help my community straight. So you are not getting paid if that's what you're looking for. And this and, and this friend's response was, I already know there's money in this. So like, I'm not worried about that. Like it's gonna happen. Cool. Now maybe if Mel hadn't been so quick and eager to be get some help because she was afraid to do it by herself at the beginning i would have clicked on what that person just said to me which is you were only money driven about the situation i don't operate that way see one thing you hear the idea about equally yoked that they say with like relationships with business partners that's also important as well you guys should be like equally yoked so just so to speak on your mental of how you're going to do things your game plan of how you're going to do things and your morals and what's your drive behind what you're why we're doing what we're doing okay so brief intermission because I have to go get my tea. I can hear it going off. Let's pause. All right, y'all. So tea, it's a must in Mel's life. We're back. Okay, where was I? Yeah, okay. So that's just a little bit of backdrop of how I was so quick to jump on things that I've learned my lessons in life and stuff like that with that in terms of business. Okay. It's still kind of hot. So so moving forward now we're still working together we're really actually working well together which is why i also started to like put like the bad negative thoughts like behind me like ignore the intuition of things i was feeling like because you know you guys know when okay you know when you have an idea or you're working with someone or something like that and there's little things that they say or do throughout the day and you realize wait what like it kind of catches you off guard like wait what that didn't sound too right but then you brush it because you're like it's okay like everything else is going so well so like i'm gonna ignore that one little thing you said or i'm gonna ignore that that just happened i'm gonna get into those more so things are going well the show's going well um 
production. Number one no-no that I noticed. So I'm about to just put raw talk out there because you know I like to keep it raw, which means keeping it honest. It's not derogatory. And um, the first episode ever visually of Raw Talk with Mellow, I completely left that um, production side in the hands of my partner at the time. Um, he assured me he had this program, everything was gonna go well, um, he wanted to use a camera, all that stuff. Um, it was against what I wanted to do, but I trusted that they would be, he would be better with the situation because uh, he worked in production. I mean, this is somebody that was telling me that they were working with Oprah. So, you know, I was like, oh, okay, you know, this should be good. Sorry guys, I'm taking a long time. I really hate drama conversations. I'm trying to keep this as like clean as possible. Mellow form. But saying, when we did the first episode of Raw Talk with Mellow, I left it completely in his hands. I was very trusting about it, which was like, I don't care who you work with. You guys should always be on it together and know what's going on together. Unless you guys are at a point where it can only affect one of you instead of both of you, then let them do what they want by themselves. When it's the both of you, make sure you're in on that. Sit down, the production, everything like that. Understand what's going on, learn. Okay, because before I started teaching myself, I was just letting this individual do it, just do it, right? Okay. So it's when I started to get gritty. So the first occurrence I had was, the first airing was a bust, okay? And the reason why it was a bust is because again, I didn't do my job on making sure that I was also involved in the production and the uploading. I kind of just like gave leeway. This is someone I was giving my passwords to, my like everything to, right? We're working together. Um, so when I found out that it wasn't gonna be posted on time, it was very last minute and I was livid. Cause like I had just done all of my part of promoting it and making sure that it was known and putting my neck on the line because something that I had to explain to this person is nobody's seeing your face, they're seeing mine and I'm the one who has to take the for everything, whether I knew it was gonna happen or not. Um, so I require you to communicate with me, which again, now where I am in my life, I can see that my part was just not making sure I was in there. Like I'm not asking you, I'm in there, right? Okay. Um, when the episode finally aired and I saw that I could still see, I don't know what this is, <laughs> this thing on like the camera of our faces and this box and everything, I was petrified. I was petrified. Like the family that I did speak to, they know I was beyond embarrassed, beyond petrified, beyond, like even the raws that I had on, it was two of them and I felt like I had let them down. Like I was just so frustrated, right? only to find out from my business part of the time later, like months down the line, right? That he also had another business partner and that they were kind of working on it together, which I didn't okay that. I don't even know what's going on, but again, that's my fault, right? Okay. So I didn't know somebody else was in on my stuff. I didn't know somebody else was, was looking at my visuals. I didn't know somebody else knew my content that was coming. I didn't know somebody else was all in my ish. I didn't know that, right? Hmm. Anywho, um, he tells me and he ends up confessing to me later on that he didn't even edit the episode. He just threw it on there like how it was like, Shh. so while you're telling me that the reason for the it being late is you editing and you uploading and not knowing the program and like, YouTube and all this stuff, you didn't edit a thing, but you just made it seem like you were. So imagine if I really had been paying you. Moving forward. The next thing that started to happen that was started to throw me off too, which I had to learn from, because there's 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 growth in your pain, guys. That's what I'm trying to teach you in case you haven't learned that from me. People think I tell these stories to be mixed up or I tell these stories just to like out myself. Yeah, in a way I'm outing myself, but I'm outing myself for the greater good. How many of us stay silent and we're all going through similar things and no one says nothing? How would I prevent that 16 year old from doing something stupid by hearing what this 30 year old did when she was 18 or 16? Feel me? Anyway, hop back into it. Um, The second big red flag for me
The second big red flag for me was the business partner. Remember I mentioned that he had a business partner that I didn't know was in on my stuff. So we did an episode one time fully shot the episode had the raw come and drive her gas which god bless her drove her gas to where we were because raw talk wasn't always based in brampton before it was based in cambridge well guelph i guess so to speak anyway she actually made the trip down there and we recorded and everything everything well had the whole episode it was great because one thing about me i like to do things on the first take one take i don't like to be fake and do multiple takes i like it to be raw real and authentic that's why some parts may be dry in the episode some parts may not because i'm not fake and fun we were you are getting it raw right so she comes everything we do it all good I had to drop my pride when my business partner approached me. I think it was like the following day or two days later and let me know the whole episode was deleted. Gone. So I'm here like, like these are the behind the scenes things that happen with these shows and that people don't really talk about, right? But I was like, huh. So now Mel gotta think quick on her feet. Like Mel, I always think quick. You got a problem with like, quick, I'm quick, right? So I'm like, okay, great. So now I gotta let this girl know this. I'm not even about to hide this. I'm a kind of person, I'm not gonna hide. I'm gonna tell you the real. We ain't got the episode anymore. We really need to reshoot it. We need to reshoot it. She was nice enough to say yes. She came back. We reshot it. Okay, cool. After doing all that, no, before we even do all that, I can't remember if it was before or after. Him and I got a got into a heated argument. Heated. Because I had found out that his other business partner that I didn't know was in on my stuff had sabotaged and deleted it out of spite, jealousy that we were working together. And that pissed me off because these are moments where you gotta let me know what's really going on. Cause a simple sit down and conversation with him to let him know I'm not stepping on your toes. I'm not even like, but probably would have cleared that up. But because whatever communication was happening, I didn't know this person was in on my stuff. Somebody who had access to my stuff was now deleting production. Hell no. You're about to get a different Mel. Right? Tell you guys, I have two sides. You either get the nice cordial one or you get the one that got to tune your ass up and I don't care. So that's Mel that he got that day. And I was very pissed off. And we really had like a serious conversation. Like even if I'm heated, I know how to like listen to you and like go back and forth still. So, cause we're not gonna get anywhere unless we're hearing each other. So, you know, he let me know. And I told him straight, okay, that's great that this individual apologize to you about it but did he apologize to me or the raw which is the individual that made her time the time to drive here twice and do this show she didn't have to do that thank you so much because you I, if you hear in this you know who you were she didn't have to do that and she'll always have my respect for that because she still did it um so i told him straight he apologized to you but he needs to apologize to me i'm sorry I am a forgiving person. I can move for it. You need to apologize. Because hiding behind like you as my business partner and deleting my content that he wasn't even there to like do was real messed up to me. Like it was real sideways, you know? Anywho, um, we got past that. Um, but there was also little things that started to happen. So while things were happening with my production, right? I'm also dealing with like weird things from him. So stuff like randomly telling me, you know, when we were in high school, all the guys want to talk to you, but you're really standoffish, which is true. Which if you guys have learned from my bro and how I was, why it was the way it was. And you know, they used to always go to him apparently. This is the story he's telling me. They used to always go to him apparently and be like, yo, can you help me talk with Mel? And he, they'd be like, how you talk to her? And he would just be like, I just talked to her. He was like my little bro. Literally, he was like my little bro. He's younger than me. Like, he's my little bro. Like, 
I kind of looked out for him a little bit sometimes in high school. So, anywho, he's telling me this story, everything like that. And then um, he basically says to me one day, like, we're just talking. And he's like, you know, you are like the definition of love for me. Like, you know, like, you know, I, like, I love you. And hmm. Just one more time. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little frigged up, okay? Because my response was, oh, you're so sweet. Because I really, really was like, I didn't think it was like that. Like, I really was like, oh, like, you know, I'm big sis, your little bro. And you asked to work with me and I think it's cool because you know, it'd be nice to have support and we doing it. But I didn't know that like you were feeling me. Feeling me. Like, you know, like I, it kind of caught me off guard. So I just kept it cute. Like, oh, you're so sweet. And just like, you know, kept going with the combo. We moved from there. Hindsight now, that probably could have been like hurtful. I wasn't like trying to disregard his feelings. I just wasn't there. And maybe I should have just said a little bit more, you know, hindsight. Anyway, it doesn't excuse what started to happen. So um, I like to, I love drinking wine. Wine is my thing. Pinot Grigio all day. Love wine, right? I will never drink red. Every time we would get there, he would always have wine. Like once he knew I liked, he was already a wine drinker. But like once he knew I liked wine, he would always have wine. Like every time we had to do a meeting or we had to go over something. Cause at this point now I wanted to see what the editing was about. I'm not done. We ain't doing that more than once to mail, no. So I wanted to see, you know, the editing process, start to learn things, see things, his program, like that, okay. But you always have wine. And I don't mind you having wine, we're adults, sip and drink. Like I sip and work sometimes too, it's fine. But it started to get to the point where, and you guys know I hold meds. It started to get to the point where it was like pressure. Like every time I would, some days I don't like to all, I'm not someone who likes to be intoxicated every day. I find that whatless. Being drunk every day or that you're whatless. Why are you doing that? What are you running from? People that go to clubs every week or that drink all the time, you are running from something. And you were drugging yourself, whether it be with um, drugs or uh, liquor, because liquor's a drug to me. You are medicating constantly. You are running from something, right? I like to have sober days. <laughs> like, people know I had hold meds. I think they think I hold meds every day. Like, no, I like, like, you know? I got stuff to do. I work. I got, I got kids to help take care of. Like, I, who has, I don't have time for that. Anyway, excuse me. Tea, I did Um... Yeah, it got to the point where like I would be showing up and I'm like, hey, let's work, let's get this done. Like, let's get this. Cause I was still a student at the time. So I had like freebie time. So I was like, all right, get it, let's go, you know. And I think at the time he was working, but it was more flexible. And he was looking for work, which we're gonna get to that in a minute. So yeah, like he just became very pushy like i'd come in be ready for work we would meet at his house because that's where like everything was for the time being we were looking for a space and i literally would come there and he would already have the wine out and like the the, the i can't remember what they're called the flask or whatever the wine goes in have it all out the glasses and everything and i and he'd be like yeah i'm out and he would be pouring and i'd be like no like i'm good and he'd be like oh, i'm just, just gonna pour it anyway you know like it would just be here you know even like another night I remember I was like, I don't want to drink, like, I'm good. And he was like, okay, like, I'm just going to go do mine. And then he went downstairs to do dishes, and he still brought up two glasses, meaning one for me, and was still pouring his. And then as I was talking, I remember, like, turning my head, looking at the screen, and I looked back, and this guy has one poured for me, like, sitting. It's like, it, it just wasn't, no matter what I said, it wasn't, like, clicking. So eventually I'm going to start leaving the wine there and just, like, wasting it. Like, I don't want it today, right? Um, one particular night, it was like one of those nights, 
and um, we had drank, I actually drank that and I was like, okay, I'm gonna have a little bit. I don't know what it is about men and me. I'm not the type of woman where if you get me under the influence that I'm gonna do stuff I wouldn't normally do. I do it as if I was sober. If I don't wanna do it, I don't do it. If I do it, I do it. It doesn't matter how much herb I smoke. It doesn't matter how much I drink. Like I'm, if I do it's cause I wanna do it. No liquor or herb or amount of anything is gonna make me do something I don't wanna do. I don't relate that. I know my cutoff. I learned that when I was in university in partying days and I stayed to it. Stay aware and have fun. Don't be like, and you're unaware. Stuff happens, especially when you're female. All right, remember Melo told you that. I don't care how old you are. Males go through it too. So men, it also applies to you. I'm just speaking from a woman's perspective. Okay. So um, yeah, we have been sipping or whatever. And I like stand up and I'm looking at the screen and he like stands up and for the first time he like stands with his body like right up next to me, right? So I like feel the touch and I'm like, you know, step over to the side a little bit. I'm very blunt and dry. Like if I'm not entertaining you, I'm not entertaining you, right? So I'm just like, all right, cool. You know, maybe you feel a little nice. So we're like there, still working on the screen. And he's just still very like, you know, I think he, yeah, that night he even tried to convince me like, oh, like, you know, you should sleep over, you should stay over. And I was like, bruh. <laughs> I grew up with men, but I look damn like, no, right? <laughs> Ladies, there's some stuff when you got like bros and stuff, you're put on game. So when, when they're doing it, you're like, oh yeah, I, I peep what you're doing. They don't let them know you peep what you're doing, but peep, right? Okay, so yeah, that's what's to happen. Anyways, he realizes, I guess, I'm like, nah, I, I'm the type of girl, I see you pushing too much, all right, bag, I see you tomorrow, yo. leave you, take care of yourself, all right? So I'm walking to the car, and he was a gentleman that way, at least, he would like walk me to my car, because it'd be dark, like, I, we'd be there hours, putting in work for hours, okay? So he walked me to my car after all this, this particular night, and he goes to like give me a hug, which is normal. I'm a hugger. I hug everybody. Everybody. Ladies, if you got a man, you see me hug your man, calm your nerves. I'm a hugger. I literally, it's like a friendly hug. Okay? I'm a hugger. You know, people dap, people shake hands. I hug. Okay? Bring it in. Anyway, um, I give him the hug like usual. And as he's getting ready to pull away, he does a quick kiss on the cheek. I'm irritated now. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The type of woman I am, if I tell you don't touch my body, don't touch my body. If I am not giving you the, yeah, don't ever, ever fucking overstep. I will make you feel it. I don't play that. I've had enough experiences in my life where I don't play that anymore. Okay? Um. Yeah. So I was irritated by it and I was like, oh. got in my car. There. Now hindsight again. Cause I was just liking how we were working together. I should have just like hit that nail on the head. Like, bro, don't ever do that again. You continue this, we're not working together. I didn't. Dumb. So I get in the car now and drive home. Okay, great. That's another occurrence. A different situation that started to come up later now. So we had you freaking my production, your business partner freaking my production, you not wanting to tell me, you hiding it from me. We have now you starting to try to drop kisses on people and have people stay over and constantly have them intoxicated. Okay. Um, birthday time comes for this individual. And I'm the kind of person that like, I like to try to make people feel special. I love making people feel special. Cause I know the feeling of never like feeling that way. So I was like, okay, you know, your birthday, like, you know, let me get you ready. So, you know, I had the person super excited because they weren't too excited for their birthday. But I find a lot of men are like that. They don't really get happy for their birthday. So I was like, okay, you know, let me like help this person, you know, let him live it up. So he invites his friends, everything. Um, I was a driver. And yeah, we just went and had a day, you know, had a good day. And um, when we got back home, it was him one, two, and two other male friends that were staying with him, right? Now, I won't drop that, but I will just say there were heavier drugs involved, which I became privy to later that I did not know, okay? I'll just leave that at that. 
Um, yeah, so I bring them all back to the house, drop them to his house, full car. So there it's him, me, and two other male friends. I'm the type of woman. I think I've only been to one house ever because that was like my potty. Like that was like my my homie, like my my best friend. Like I trusted this individual like wholeheartedly with my soul. Like if this person had been like, yo, move there, you're gonna be safe, I would have moved. Like that's how I looked at this individual. And that was the only house where there was multiple men in there. But as long as I was sitting beside this individual, I felt safe, so I was cool. In this particular case, which is most cases for me, if I, my brother had taught me, if I walk into a space and I'm outnumbered by men, cut. Cut. I don't care. Cut. You're outnumbered, cut. Okay? So um, I get to the house and there he's like, yo, come on in, like, come stay. And I'm like, Bruh! with three dudes and me. Y'all intoxicated? Nah. So I'm like, nah, yo. I didn't even come out the car. I just, yeah, you guys have a good time. And he's like, no, you're not. Nah. Have a good time. So they get out the car or whatever. I leave. Okay, cool. Um, so after that now, things started to get more chill. Like, I, th I felt like he started to get the point, you know, we were back on the straight and narrow, you know. Okay, cool. But then... He started looking for work at this time and I became kind of like a taxi which I kind of didn't mind because I felt kind of bad that we were working so hard and like I wasn't able to like pay this individual as a student and like I felt like this was a way of giving like back like you know letting like driving him where he needs to go so I was starting to drive him to interviews and like yo pump him up for it get him ready for it in the car when he come in you know how did it go you know go eat and stuff um we would go out to eat and stuff because you when you're in when you're in a business relationship you also have to build the relationship right so we would go eat sometimes and like discuss things and like while we're out to dinner we're like enlisting people as raw as like it was nice but then um it started to get constant so constant to the point where i started just telling this person you know i don't have gas because i i thought it would make the person be like oh, okay don't worry about it but then it just started being like okay i'll send it to you and I was like, oh, <laughs> like, oh, I don't want to drive today. Oh, okay, cool. You know, so, and again, I felt bad. So, um, yeah, driving him, chauffeuring him around, picking him up for work and stuff. Mind you though, I don't want it to seem like it was um, only for his benefit because sometimes picking him up from work we were able to get home and get ready faster for production for like Roz would come and stuff you get what I mean so it it, it helped I like to be fair y'all I don't like to act like things are only on people I like to be very fair anyway um where was I going with this after that now the only problems that we started to have were miscommunication um I'm not gonna put his business out there, but there was stuff that happened and um, affected him. It had nothing to do with me, just like life. And um, how could I say this? Respect. I started to notice that this individual was a compulsive liar. Um, so much to say. So I hate liars. Um. The reason why I hate them is because I'm not somebody that you need to lie to. My family knows that. Like the ones that are actually close to me, the ones that I've decided to keep in my life, they know that. Like whether I'm right, wrong, dead ass wrong, you're gonna curse me out, I'm gonna tell you what I did. Yeah. Like I am blunt like that. I'll take the heat. Even if I feel bad and cry after, I'll take the heat. Like, and I expect the same of others that are gonna be in my space. If you can't do it, cut exit stage left don't come back till you know how to be honest and have integrity feel me okay so first it'd be like little things you know like okay i'm finding out like you're lying about my production okay i'm finding out that you're lying about editing okay i'm, I'm finding out now that you're lying to me about what's happening with your job okay you know i'm finding out now that Sometimes you're telling me you have to do work and discuss things and I show up and it's like you're just trying to chill. 
it's like no bro you told me we have work to do that's why i drove here that's why i'm here i just drove to another city you understand what i'm saying so like there are little things that start to get frustrating for me like that um setting times to do things and mind you i was sucking at being on time too at first and like making the effort to get there on time that day and like getting it done and now being on top of myself and then now he's like on the opposite never on time you know so i just started to get really like i think even one time i was like coming to pick him up and i was like listen from like two days in advance i was like hey, we gotta be ready for 12 we gotta meet this raw for one okay and i like get to the house to pick him up and drive there and he has like one of his homies over and they're barely functional which is why i said i'm not going to get into the details they are barely functional and i'm here like oh my gosh like i gotta sweep this guy up i gotta find a way to like your homie's still clearly on a binge like can't even look at me without shades on like we have business to handle today you knew this ahead of time so just like stuff like that um the straw that broke the camel's back and i'm just gonna end it there um the straw that broke the camel's back for me was we were shooting at my dad's place this particular time and i had had a close friend at the time there and her boyfriend and we were shooting that day their episode which never aired after all this and um i had a lot of things we had a lot of backed up files and stuff that still be uploaded and i let it all go because i just enough when I, when i have enough like it's enough it's enough for you enough so because i give like 30 50 million chances i tell people all the time i forgive things that should not be forgiven that's just the kind of person i've always been but when i get to that point where you can't even huh to me you can't even huh to me trust me okay um yeah we were shooting at my dad's place and we were there we were all shooting and this was a particular day where we had already had an argument regarding again being on time with production and things the day before so another thing he used to do is be very spiteful so like the next day something would magically go wrong with a video or always something to be spiteful because again remember he was handling the production um so he's already in a bad space can't remember what it was exactly to be honest i'm being honest and there's already attitude or whatever so before we even drove there or whatever so we get there and his attitude is just on level 10 and i'm trying to brush it because we're in front of people with clients here and i'm just trying to keep it you know calm which wouldn't be the first time i've had to apologize to clients like multiple times like having clients on set and him coming and being like can you guys get off set oh no that was that day yeah okay so we're all on set because we're getting ready he hasn't really told us to move or anything we're getting mic'd up and everything because that's why i still had mics and stuff like that we're getting mic'd up and stuff and um he like i guess he's frustrated and he's like can you guys get off set and me including the guests the raws are like so i'm like sorry guys like trying to you know damage control sorry guys you know like uh let's just step off for a second i think he has to do something so I'm kind of looking at him like i'm gonna to fix the hell up you right luckily i knew these ones so they're you know, understanding where they're like, talking or whatever but everybody can notice like what the frig is wrong with this person right so we're still going or whatever we do the video everything like that we get through the episode we get through the episode and after we get through the episode, <laughs> things start to go haywire. Because I'm not liking the constant disrespect. Like they're not picking up on everything that he's saying and the little smile comments and what's happening, but I am and it's driving me crazy, okay? A little piece before this is he this man is giving me some whole extravagant story again, compulsive lying about um a child of his being in an accident or whatever and the man sent me a google screenshotted photo like i'm a dunce cat right i said straight if this is a family citron bro leave who gives a damn about this production of this stuff yo this is your family i don't play about my family so leave like i get it go no he wanted to stay so you had if you decide to stay you can't have an attitude the whole time because i told you go 
You understand what I'm saying, people? You feeling me? Like if something's that serious, go. Like you're telling me your child's in an accident, leave. What do you mean you're staying? Cool. If you're gonna stay, I don't need the attitude and neither do these guests. You understand? Okay, he didn't understand. So that's, we dealt with it the whole time. So anyways, like I said, after we shoot, everything goes haywire because I am literally like shaking. I am trying to keep it together, right? So at the end of it, they're like, you know, let's go, her boyfriend suggests let's go eat something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it went. So I'm like, okay, cool. Actually, I wasn't even supposed to go with them. They brought me to save me, if I remember correctly, because they could see like the heat in the room, right? So... I'm like getting ready to go. We're going to leave and stuff. Um, he starts getting upset because he has to stay back to edit. So what I'm trying to say to him is, okay, go ahead, edit. Like we can always bring you something. We can always bring you something back. Like, you know, you're telling me you want to get it done right now. I'm trying to say to you, you can come with and you can do it later, but you want to do it right now. So, okay, I'm not going to force you. Like, okay, do it right now, but we are still going to go eat. Guys are hungry. Okay, it's been hours. Okay. What happened now? Um, oh, he starts getting an attitude with me about it. I can't remember exactly what it was. I started getting an attitude. And I'm just looking at him and he's talking. And I'm like, yo, jit. And he's talking, he's talking. And I just, God, forgive me. I was wrong. I snap. Like everything just enough. All right. I've been trying to brush it. I've been trying to brush the advances. I've been forgiven the, 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 the brutal sabotage of my beginning of the i've been forgiven the lies i've been brushing past everything i today i tried to just keep you calm keep the situation going and then you you want different mel now that's what you want all right here she is so i go off I'm not even gonna lie to you, Ross. Told you I like to keep things raw and honest. I go off. I told him straight, shut up, stop talking. Cause you're about to get a very different Mel right now. I remember saying that and I meant it from my soul, bro. Like that day, I meant it. And I told him straight, yo, I'm like, like I was, I was yelling and like free like i was like you know what so i just literally i remember my friend being there and i walked away because he was still like talking crap and i and i walked away because i was like i need to go i need to go i need to go i need to go like i'm the kind of person like i'll separate myself because you need to be able to self-regulate and i know that i got anger and i will remove myself go for a walk whatever calm down and come back so we can have this calm cool and collected because if you keep me on this level and you stay on this level blows easy that's just me being honest okay so i have learned ways to regulate self-regulate so i literally walk away for a second and i go to my friend like my bridge at the time and i'm like yo get me out of here right now. she she knew me at the time get me out of here right now yo i am trying my best like you guys don't know level 35 mil you don't so she's like, yeah, no, 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 no. Like, cool, right? So they get me out or whatever. We get in the car, we're talking. She's like, yo, you don't even yell like that. Like, it's. I really tell you guys, I don't like that side of Mel. I really, I really don't. I. She disgusts me. Like, I don't like her. Um, I try my best to stay in a good space and keep the foolishness away from me because I will tune it up. Like, I, I really try my best. So just talking about, it, I feel like an asshole all over again. Cause I know how I went off. Like I know, coming for blood. I know. So we leave. I'm in the car, like <sighs> calming down and stuff. We go. They're great at the time. Like they're helping me. We like whatever. So we get back to the house now. I am now in a calm state. Remember. So we get back to the house now. And this guy, I come in and he's like, "How do you spell his name?" So I'm like, "Oh, you're still, you're still there." I'm gonna have to do the work to keep it calm then again. So I'm, that's another thing I started having. He was not very professional once his emotions kicked in. Like it was very hard to keep him like professional. So, and this is in front of people. Like I get it. You're, you try to sabotage my production. I try to sabotage my clients. Make it seem like we cray. I get it. Don't do that, please. Okay. Anyway. 
<sighs> he asked me the question of how do you spell his name and I tell him the spelling and he wants a different spelling because he's like the spelling that I have up on the video has to match and I'm like I get it but when you were having an attitude and you were ignoring us because he was also ignoring us at one point on set so while you were ignoring us we had the conversations of what he would like to be called by and i respect that because some people don't want their government up so i respect whatever they want up there okay you missed that conversation so i'm just letting you know that's what it is okay but it's not <laughs> okay i hear you but this is what it needs to be okay i don't want to meet you with attitude this is how you spell the name done talk like just please put it on He's still going or whatever. So again, I walk upstairs, take a break. Cause you're in my house, remember. I have a person in my house. It's not like I'm trying, I'm like, I'm trying to keep it at a level. Um, leaves. I mean, sorry, he doesn't leave. I leave, I go take a break again. Now the friend and her, you know, come back in. The boyfriend's left, I think, yeah. And um, me and her come back downstairs where he is. Cause you know, to finish up and he still has like an attitude about stuff like basic things like he's just going off so again i'm like bruh i don't want to tune up again i don't want to do this again like i don't want to do this again so anyway i'm trying to stay quiet I'm trying to stay calm I'm trying to just like walk around talk to my friend or whatever so i kept it calm for as much as i could and then he dropped this line on me which remember guys, I told you something at the very beginning of this episode of how this all started, of how this individual asked to be with me, how I was a student, how I was like, no, I'm not gonna pay you all that good stuff, right? And then this person's response was, don't worry, I see the money in it. There's gonna be money in this, right? At one point, he even said to me one day, and that was another red flag when he was like, I'm just on this for the money to be honest, I don't really care about anything else. And I was like, ooh. Okay, well I believe in Ikigai and I believe in something behind the money and money will come so you and I already are on the same page feel me anyway back to where we are now present setting downstairs or whatever so he drops this line like in the middle of him murmuring he's also speaking like he like speaks in his language when he gets mad so he's like talking shit to me in his language and stuff like that well that shit never phases me you talk shit to me in your language knock yourself out I don't know what the fuck you say okay knock yourself out right so then after that he speaks English and he's like He's like, are you even paying me? No, I'm not. See, this is where I'm out. You see, now I'm back on time, right? No, I'm not. Do you even have the audacity from the stuff that you've been doing to even ask your production? Are you on time? Do I not show for you? Don't you have half the stuff never done on time? Don't I have to schedule you myself? Don't I have to check everything? But then you want someone to pay you for that? All right, take your ass somewhere else. Straight up. No, this is when I got to my level. Pack your shit. Take yourself somewhere else. Work with someone else and see if they're going to pay you for your work. See if they're going to pay you for the kind of work you've done. See. Go see. You're working for Oprah and everything right now, right? Because I brought you to the interview and you came out telling me you got it and you're working for Oprah and you met Oprah. Okay, so I'm chump change to you. Go work that money for Oprah. Go do that. Go do that. Just know you did that. Don't come back here. Go do that. So he wants to puff back. Like, okay, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, at this point now, like this is, this is why Mal really worked to get herself better because I like leaned over and was like, huh, and I was like level 10. I can't remember everything I said. I just know that was insulting as hell. That I can own. Like that I can apologize for. That was, I was, I was cutting you from the throat all the way down to your belly button. Straight cut, gutting you. Pulled them shits out, okay? So anyways, it gets so bad, which again, my family knows me, where my dad hears me and he comes down the stairs, right? And he comes down and he's like, whoa, okay, no, no. He's like, I'm not gonna be a part of this. Like, I'm not gonna be a part of you berating somebody. Like, I'm not. Cause like, I, I tell you guys, I was going off, right? So my dad's like, nah, like, 
I'm not gonna be part of you doing this, not in here, like blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, I could, like I was, I remember I told you guys I black out, like I don't really hear stuff. So I was like telling my dad, I was like, no, no. My dad, that's a big guy. But like when I get to love, I don't care about size. So I was just like, so anyways, he finally like gets me. I'm like, yo, this is my dad. I gotta be respectful. So I like, I lock it down. And it gets to the point where I'm like, yo, and I call my friend, I'm like, can you please help my dad not be manipulated by the situation? Because now that my dad's there, he's turning into like a bitch, right? I don't even know why she's talking to me like this. Man. Where is all that energy you just had? Where is all that heat before my dad came down here? Anyway, which people do with me a lot, I've realized. Because family members and old friends know how I used to operate, they know that like I'll give chance and chance and chance and chance. But then when you push my button, yeah, I'm tearing your ass up. Up. With zero remorse at that time. Like I'm like I'm ruthless at that time, right? So um a lot of people I started to realize, like old friends and stuff that I got rid of, is a lot of people would play into that. So they would do things and then when they would finally get me to point to like start telling them about themselves or be pissed off and see me like still trying to work through, like still trying to talk to them calmly and still trying to do everything. They'll still say like smart things, have attitude, do things like have their boyfriends listening, like just stuff like that, right? In order to manipulate the situation so that later on they can say, yo, Mel crazy, yo. She's just an angry person, yo. She's had a temper, yo. She, but you guys forgot the six, seven, eight, nine months where Mel was cool with you. Mel kept talking through things with you. Mel kept letting you know, yo, I don't like this. You get, and then you, you understand what I'm saying? Okay. None of the majors was, none of the majors are working on my anger, so people could no longer make that fake portrayal of me because a lot of people would use it. Okay. So I want to wrap this up. So yeah, I'm like, yo, get your stuff, get your stuff, whatever. So my dad's like, enough, he leaves, he like, my dad even, my dad, I think my dad even made the point to him of like, you have been late with a lot of her production and she has still been calm. Like my dad was even like, listen, I know my kid ain't right right now, but I understand where she's coming. You understand? Okay. So um, he then stopped talking because he realizes, oh, okay, I can't manipulate this individual. Um, after that, I packed him up in my car. Like I literally, I'm sorry, I'm playing chords. I was like, I don't give a damn about this production. This episode will not go up. You and I are done. All the other stuff you have, keep it. Don't you dare upload it. Cause I'm on it. Try me. Cause I also know my law. Try me. Okay. So, um, let me pack all your stuff up. We're done. Go work with somebody else. Matter of fact, I remember him even telling me that there was these other guys we used to go to high school with that were reaching out to him and he was like, you know, like, I want to work with them. And I was like, to be honest, this is exactly what I was like, to be, I think even one of the Ross was there at the time. I was like, to be honest, I don't really like how they moved about it, but do you, like, I'm never going to stop you. Like, that's your money. That's your bread. Like, that's your, that's your work. Go work for whoever you want. Just make sure you on time for this. That's all. I don't mind who you work with. Do you. You understand? I was very clear about that. Like, I'm never gonna, I'm, I will never stop someone's hustle. I will never stop someone's shine. I can't. <laughs> Nobody can. Nobody can stop this for me. Just like I can't stop any anything that's, else, that's, that's made for someone, that God gave someone. You can't stop nothing that God's made someone to do. That's their purpose. That's their ikigai. You can't knock yourself out, you know? So I was like, yo, I would never stop you from like, what if you work with them, that's your big break. And I'm just chump. You get what I mean? Yeah. So that's how that went. Um. So yeah, I remember packing up in the car. My friend at the time was also in the car. I dropped them both home. And we dropped them to his. And as usual, as usual, because they know I'm forgiving. And this is why I said I got rid of people who used to be manipulated like this. Remember how he was just carrying on? Couldn't manipulate my dad. So then he got quiet. Everybody else was already there as a witness. So he can't lie to them. So now where we're at is that I am now outside his house and I am literally packing everything for him. Gently, nicely taking everything out the trunk, all your bags, all your stuff, all your things. Cause another thing I did is I never ever kept anything from him. I don't play that. Um, And while I'm doing it, he's like, Mel, you know, let's, let's talk about this. You know, I'm a, you really, no. Cause now you know I'm done. I tell you, you know when I'm done. I won't even acknowledge, 
I'm done. So anyways, long story short, how it all ended up happening is I let him know straight the following day because he kept texting and messaging the same manipulation as usual and I would be forgiving and say, let's just keep working. And I said, I will be dropping everything off at your house. It will be at the front door if you're not home. And I am a woman of my word. I don't play that. So what I did was I packed everything up, every single aspect of that set in my little Mazda Hachi. I put everything in there and figured it out, made the trip, drove over, left everything nicely and neatly in front of the door because he wasn't home and cut my ties receipts everything because i also sent out my documentation i don't play about my documentation don't ever think you're gonna try me i sent out my documentation so i literally like receipts everything everything's there you got it all ties cut there's no finances involved so we good no contract we good right um what i will say is this If you're ever going to work with a business partner, make sure you do your research. And if you don't know your research, just make sure you're in on everything and you're kind of aware of what's going on. And don't be so trusting right away. Um, people can be manipulative. I'm sure he really was enjoying like really doing and working at first, but then stuff just started to get really wonky. I don't understand why. And again, it could be because I hurt his feelings. Again, I, I, I um, rejected. Um, but what I also would like to do is say that it helped me just find my strength and be able to be solo dolo and taught me to learn how to produce by myself and taught me how to learn lighting by myself and taught and i'm still learning and you know what i'm so happy and thankful and grateful in a weird way i'm always thankful for my pain in a weird way because maybe me staying with you would have kept me small minded in myself you understand what i'm saying that confidence to believe in myself the last thing that I want to do is apologize officially because the reason I'm doing this couch confession is I'm leaving this all in 2022. 2023, none of this is coming with me. Drama free. So um, what I want to do is apologize to the Raws that were involved in this individual playing with me in production. That was not fair to you guys. And it was not fair that I couldn't have, I wasn't, not couldn't, I had, was not. I chose not to be more vocal on what was happening. Um, I also want to apologize to one particular Ra who was an artist on my show, um, great singer. Um, I almost didn't work with her and I want to apologize for judging her that way because he had let me know, again, compulsive lying, things like she was trying to sleep with him and that while we were produ producing, she was telling him like, I want to, you on camera and stuff like that. And I just didn't see it. And I found that very dotty slotty butty. And I also found it very unprofessional with what we were doing. Um, but based off what I went through and the calls of the lies and stuff that came out later, I uh, I feel like I definitely judged you incorrectly. I shouldn't have just gone off what this person said. Um, so yeah, I will apologize for those things and just excited for 2023, moving forward, being solo dolo and knowing that I can't disappoint myself. And I will never set up or, or betray myself. And I'm, I'm comfortable with that, you know? Even like my dynamic, my dynamic of the Raws, I'm like choosing now and change. Like it's just all, it's nice now. I'm very excited for 2023. I am so excited about the trip ride. I can't take it. Wrapping it up. Yeah, I'm so excited. Um, but something big that I want to let ladies know is whether it's work I've been there whether it's work whether it's business or whatever never give in to somebody wanting to utilize your body ever keep it separate trust me keep it separate um but also understand that they men and women they're going to make advances if you're male they're going to make advances if you're female and if you don't entertain it sometimes you're going to lose business ventures and that's okay because you know what it's okay to not grow fast without using your body it's okay to take your time it's okay that you don't get it done in a year or two it's okay but you know what's not okay yeah ever getting that virtue back ever getting that respect for your body back you already gave it you understand what you hear what you hear what Mel is saying to you guys men and women because women you guys are getting reckless and treating men like they're little like things like both ways okay 
Um, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. So this is that was my couch confession of what I like to call my business partner from hell. And I just say it's my business partner from hell, not because the person was evil. It wasn't like he was constantly, no, I would never say that. I don't even hate the individual. It's just that um, it was time to separate ties and you got work to do. Um, it's like I still had work to do, self-work that is. And um, I wish you all the best in life and do you, you know? I hope things are going well with Oprah. I'm not being sarcastic. For the people out there like, oh, okay, she's being shady. Like, no, I really hope everything's going well and that you reach your dream and you're making that loot that you were saying you're gonna make. And you know, everything's going well with your seed. Like, I hope, I wish you all the best. Um, and I would hope you wish the best for me. Um, funny thing, not even three months ago now, I think or so, could be, maybe more. Um, I received a text from this individual. Um, Basically just the usual crap. Hey Mel, I hope all is well. I'm just checking in. Um, I really miss you, blah, blah, blah. You know, the stuff I'm used to. So um, I just left that on red. Um, if you're watching this, it's not because I dislike you or I hate you. We're just not gonna do this dance. You understand? Um, yeah. All right guys, remember the things I told you after all that. Just remember the key things that Mel learned from that. And if you are going through this in any way, shape, or form, separate. The money, I tell people all the time, money is not worth your sanity or your happiness or your health. It's not. I see people all the time that work their butt off and they're so unhappy and they look like crap, but they've just got money in their account. That don't make sense. Balance it. Be happy. Be healthy and shoot. If you if you're if you're making a little bit less, that's okay. As long as you're living comfortable. Excessive living is out window. I don't know if anybody has picked up on this. Even the rich are showing you that excessive living is out window. You need to make yourself comfortable. You need to make yourself safe, and you need to have a backup plan. That's where we are right now, in this world. And if you think I'm crazy for saying that, you don't want to, you want to hear what I'm saying. Do you? But don't say I didn't tell you. All right. I got stuff to do and I got work today. So I always tell you guys two things and that is spread love. I always do that. <laughs> that is spread love and always keep it raw. And um, yeah, I hope you learn from my dumb, dumb mistakes. And um, that should be better. All right, guys, Mello here. And this is Raw Talk with Mello's Couch Confessions. <laughs> See you.